The International Fisherman's Cup was, of course, the trophy that was awarded to the vessel that won the International Fisherman's Races. And as you can see on this cup, there's only two vessels listed. The first, in 1920, was Esperanto from Gloucester. And every plaque since then has been awarded to Blue Nose, as Blue Nose was, of course, the undefeated champion. The Fisherman's Cup began as a, a reaction to a final race of an America's Cup yachting series in 1920. The competitors of, it was uh, Shamrock 4 and, and uh, Resolute, were like the boats are today. They were just finely tuned race machines, just built for speed. And the wind was too, wrong, too strong um, and they feared damaging their vessels for that day. So tails between their legs, they went out behind Sandy Hook and dropped the hook and waiting for, uh, waited for another day. Well, this caused like an immense amount of ridicule and, and derision with the public and the press, especially. I mean, I think one newspaper called it, uh, they would have had a better, better race with paper napkin boats in a bathtub or something. And William Dennis, uh, he came, he suggested a better race. It would be one between the two largest fishing schooner communities uh, on the coast. Um, Gloucester, Massachusetts, and Lunarburg, Nova Scotia. My grandfather was a great proponent uh, and booster of his home province and the region, and really felt that you needed to promote the area to bring people here for tourism and uh, to create an activity that was uh, going to be very popular, as the America's Cup was at the time in uh, the U.S. If we had something like that here with the actual working uh, schooners that I think that that might attract a lot of attention and bring people to Nova Scotia and see how wonderful it is. The America's Cup was going on and they had built these schooners in the U.S. that competed between, they were English and uh, American schooners that were competing and it was one of the most, at that point there weren't a lot of sporting events in 1920 I believe, um, so this was a highly um, uh, popular event. It was sort of international competition uh, and in those days there was no um, internet or video. It, it was, uh, people would read about it. So there was a lot of, um, I think, national pride uh, for the U.S. and Britain doing this, but they had boats that couldn't sail in over 25 knots of wind. That they looked very nice, but they were not functional. They were not, they, they weren't as tough as uh, say the working schooners that we had in Nova Scotia and Gloucester, Mass. And so uh, that was, I think, the idea for having actual real uh, schooner races and thus was the genesis of the International Fisherman's Race. They called it the race for real sailors. That's how he promoted it. And they had a contest set up in the fall of the same year. The, the Yankees ended up sending up a schooner called Esperanto with the captain Marty Walsh. Um, and the Canadians entered uh, Delawana with Captain Tommy Himmelman. Unfortunately for us, the Americans won the first two races and took the cup home to the U.S. And boy, you know, that must have really hurt. There was a loss or two for Nova Scotia and uh, uh, and then they decided that they were going to build a boat that was going to win this and keep it here. And thus the Blue Nose was uh, the golden spike and, and launched and uh, away we went. I think it went back and forth between the U.S. and Canada that uh, in Nova Scotia th that we would pick a boat if it was in the U.S. that would represent. Um, so there were trials almost um, and I think there was a back and forth and I don't know if it had to do with the winner of the cup who kept the cup where the race was the following year or not but um, I think we were very successful for many many years and the Gloucester uh, fishermen always tried to figure out how they were going to beat the Blue Nose that was because it was so successful. It went astray in uh, the U.S. at one point in Gloucester and um, turned up uh, wrapped in a blanket at a, I think in a, at a, I don't know what they would have called it in those days, a home for abandoned children with a little note, uh, but I think it was a bit of a prank. 
Um, so, but there were, I think, a few. Uh, the insurer was called, I heard, and uh, talking about uh, what <laughs> what was uh, the value of the cup and whatnot. But I think the cup symbolically meant a lot more than just the the dollar value of it. I think it became more as the Blue Nose lore grew. Uh, I think it being put on the dime, going to the World Exposition, representing Canada. I think I can't remember which member of the royal family was having a jubilee. Um, those sort of things I think were very um, uh, proud moments for him and realizing that it created a great sense of pride among Nova Scotians for um, their province and for, I think, in essence, we're surrounded by water, so what could be more Nova Scotian than the Blue Nose? Even today, I think, you know, I see the Blue Nose and it sort of makes my heart go a little fast because, oops, I touched the mic, but it makes my heart go fast because I think it just sort of touches you. Um, people don't realize, I think, if you're in Alberta and they look at a dime, they don't even think, give it a second thought, but I think every time I see a dime, I think, oh, there, there she is, so sort of a nice thing. He was just so, so proud of Nova Scotia and that this was a piece of one of his um, efforts to try to make sure that we were um, seen to be the wonderful province that we uh, are. And I think it was also a little bit about um, the tenacity of the people, that it was about real fishermen doing a real job in a boat that could also go fast. Uh, and. I think some pride on being Canadian as well uh, and not allowing the Americans to own the rights, the bragging rights for something. But really I think it was about Nova Scotia and how proud we are to be blue nosers and um, about this province. So They had to, at the Carleton Hotel in Halifax uh, a dinner for um, the crew for the, the race and it had the menu. Uh, of what they were going to eat and uh, it was quite an elaborate um, affair that uh, so there were and a printed menu so it was not just printed on a photocopier it was uh, uh, really well done and with a tassel and everything so I think there was a lot of pomp and circumstance around it and it was seen as a very prestigious thing to have taken part of so. I think as a Nova Scotian because it's about the ocean and about fishing and about um, simplicity, it's about sail, it's about wind and ocean, that those are great things that are very natural and basic um, and it's something that what they did was not easy, it's not easy to sail a boat of that size and do what they did, um, so the skill and the majestic nature of looking at that boat under sail, I don't think it can be replicated. Um, and I just think it, it really is uh, um, a piece of Canadian history that, you know, there's not much else that can duplicate that. It's on stamps, it's on, on dimes, it's everywhere around Nova Scotia, it's a restaurant, it's a store, it's so many things, so. I think he just was a big proponent of this province and its people, and he would do whatever he could with what he had, uh, and he was uh, more than happy to support, whether by utilizing the newspapers to promote it, um, his radio station, or to provide money or a cup or a dinner. Um, to advance um, Nova Scotia and the people of Nova Scotia and that was his way of giving back I think one of the many ways that he gave back to the province that he loved so much so. Was he a sailor? I don't know if he sailed. My dad years ago used to sail um, and I mean uh, I sailed a little bit. Two of my daughters uh, both did their grade 12 year on um, the Golden Lou through class afloat and the boat came in here, you know, once or twice while they were involved. So it was sort of neat to, you know, for them to have been gone for nine months at sea, crossing the Atlantic back and forth. But uh, so I don't think anybody's sailed as much as those two have in the family. But we love the ocean. We're right next to it, so it's just wonderful. Yeah.
reading about my grandfather and he was very involved with maritime rights and making sure that the Maritimes had what was promised to them in Confederation and I think he worked very hard with that and that was this was a piece of the puzzle of sort of promoting the Maritimes and making you know bringing shining a bit of a spotlight on the region uh, with the Blue Nose because it really the world was a lot smaller then and this became a sporting event was these these schooner races and it was um, widely read about across the country. Thank you.